news where you are. Good night. Thanks, Rita. Welcome to the Late Look North. With Carol Melia. Good evening, I'm Carol Melia. It's believed former England rugby union player Tom Voice has been swept away and drowned in the River Arne in Northumberland after driving across a ford swollen by flood water. His car has been found and search teams have been scouring the riverbanks downstream of Aberwick Ford. 43-year-old Mr Voice played rugby for Gloucester, Wasps and England. Andrew Hartley reports. Members of the missing man's family and volunteers have been searching this stretch of the river since first light. Members of two mountain rescue teams have also been involved. Now, I've been told the man, who was in his early 40s, had attempted to drive his vehicle in darkness through the ford behind me on this remote road near Annick. This was during Storm Dara which brought severe weather across the region. And I'm told the river was so high, it submerged the depth gauge, which has a maximum measurement of six feet. Now, the river has subsided somewhat, but at the time, it would have been extremely fast flowing. Tonight, the police revealed the missing man is the former rugby union player, Tom Voice, who was capped nine times for England. He played as winger and fullback for Premiership sides Bath, Wasps and Gloucester over a career spanning 13 years. His social media profile says he now enjoys shooting and promoting the English countryside. In a statement, Northumbria Police said it believed Mr Voice had been swept downstream and had died. It says it has recovered his vehicle and was offering support to Mr Voice's family. The search, which has involved specialist officers from the force's marine section, drones and dog handlers, is expected to continue tomorrow. Andrew Hartley, BBC Look North in North Northumberland. A man who fatally injured his partner's 22-month-old son within 20 minutes of being left alone with him has been found guilty of murder. Christopher Stockton had only moved into the family home of Charlie Roberts in Darlington the week before he died. Ian Reeve reports. January the 12th this year saw emergency services called to the Darlington home of 22-month-old Charlie Roberts, who was to later die in hospital. 38-year-old Christopher Stockton, the partner of Charlie's mother, Paula Roberts, said that Charlie had choked on a biscuit and that he had patted the child on the back and stuck his fingers down the toddler's throat. But today, a jury here at Teesside Crown Court found Christopher Stockton guilty of Charlie's murder and cruelty. Stockton had been in sole care of the boy for just 18 minutes while his mother was out having an eye test. Earlier in the trial the jury had been told that the toddler's head injury was like something seen on a fall from height or akin to a high-speed car crash and that Charlie had suffered catastrophic bleeding in his brain. Christopher Stockton was entrusted with caring for Charlie. On the morning of Friday the 12th of January, it was his responsibility to keep Charlie safe. He did not do that. He is the only person who knows exactly what happened that morning. But what we do know is that his actions resulted in the little boy's death. To install a spy camera, as Paul Roberts did, means there must have been concerns about him. If you have concerns about those caring for your children, you must act, speak out or ask for help. Charlie had everything to live for, but his life was cruelly cut short. My thoughts go out to those who truly cared about Charlie. Charlie's mother hid that spy camera in his room in a plant pot in September last year, over fears he may have been smothered by Mr Stockton to stop the boy crying. Paula Roberts has admitted a charge of neglect after failing to seek medical help for Charlie in December last year and January this year. She will be sentenced at a later date. An impassive Christopher Stockton, though, was told he will be sentenced to life imprisonment, although he will have to return to court in the new year to hear the term that he must serve before being released for the murder of Charlie, a child described today by his father as a much-loved son, taken away needlessly. Ian Reeve, BBC Look North, Teesside Crown Court. 
in Championship football tonight. Sunderland faced Bristol City, hoping to go top if they came away with a win, but it wasn't to be a one or draw, the score there. Middlesbrough were away to Leeds United, where a score was settled. Leeds took the lead in the first quarter of an hour with this less than clear-cut goal. Borough pulled one back from a corner in the second half, decisive from Neto Borg. But Leeds piled on the pressure to make it 2-1, courtesy of Dan James. And it was James again who played a big part in setting up Leeds' third early in the seven minutes of stoppage time. Final score, 3-1. It's time to catch up with the weather. A little bit chilly, maybe. Here's Paul. Good evening. High pressure and charge over the next few days. Keeping things fairly quiet. A lot of dry, settled weather around. Varying amounts of cloud, though. And varying amounts of cloud overnight tonight. Where it stays cloudy in some eastern areas, the temperatures will hold up a few degrees above freezing. In the north, though, and more especially further west, where you get the clearer skies, cold enough for a touch of frost. The temperatures may be down to about minus two, minus three Celsius in one or two spots. Tomorrow then, uh, eastern areas tend to hang on to the cloud, but it won't be as thick as it was today. It'll be more broken, especially in the north. Southern parts tend to stay cloudy, but mostly dry. Cumbria again sees the best of the sunshine. After that chilly start, the temperatures will struggle, typically 4 to 7 Celsius through the afternoon. The cloud a bit thicker on Thursday and Friday. The odd spot of rain or drizzle, some misty, murky conditions. So, so. I've seen worse. <laughs> That's it from me this evening. Our breakfast team will be back bright and early with you for now, though.